This video is on window sizing issues and solutions. Whether you're a beginner developer or advanced, this is something you need to consider with just about every solution. And this is just simply looking at a layout because you're gonna have that with any solution and you have to resize it. And then when you go to a different layout, now you have to resize that one and just trying to come up with a better solution. So if we look at our options here and we'll resize this, basically you, your option is you can do whatever, wherever, and just throw stuff everywhere. And you may even recognize right off the hand that I've got uh, tab folders within tab folders, which from a design perspective is usually a no-no, but we'll see if that is the case here. You may have heard of form over function where it's more important that it looks good and flows over actually working correctly, or you have function over form where it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it works and you don't spend a lot of time on the form. And then the last one is I would propose that you use the paying client's opinion over the developer's opinion. Several solutions I've designed, I could not believe the choices that they wanted. Even after demonstrating here are some possible options you could have, they wanted it a certain way and they're the ones paying. So that is really what matters. Uh, you can show them the options and then it's up to their choice. When it comes to window sizing and placement, there's actually two things to consider and that is sizing and placement. So we're first going to go through the sizing options. You have to choose that before you can do the placement, which you'll see why. So your options are do nothing, just do like we have been, resize manually every single time. Another option is to hard code these window sizes. And this comes from using something like the script trigger. So on a lot of these layouts, I've created a script trigger on layout enter and I've chosen this window size demo. So we'll look at that script, which currently has nothing in it. I have some options here, but let's just hard code this where we're going to do the window set size, which is this script. And we have a move resize window script step and we have some options. You can use the current window. You can do the uh, window name and calculate that. But here you can put in numbers or you can use the calculation dialog box. So this gives you all kinds of freedom here to do amazing things. Then we have a distance from top and from left, but this has to do with placement. So we'll do that one later. So if we just set these at 50 over 50, then we'll close this and we'll save all of those. What is that going to look like when we go to our other layouts? 50 is not very big, so it's not going to work. It is consistently shrinking to the wrong size. So now you may have to decide, well, what do I want it to be? Should it be 5,500 or what? What If you haven't looked at the pixels, now you're gonna have to look at some other options for sizing. So that's hard coding. And you have another option of random chance. And I actually had a client that they wanted seven different layouts for the exact same layout with different color schemes and they wanted it to randomly appear on the screen just to keep them alert. And that was their idea of fun. And since they were paying, guess what we created? Random chance and placement and sizing and color. And that was kind of odd, but it is possible with all those calculating dialog boxes. And then we have an automatically fit. And this is an excellent, fun script step this is the adjust window script step. And you have your options, resize to fit, maximize, minimize, restore, and hide. So you have some options here. So we're gonna change our demo instead of the hard-coded one, we'll do adjust to fit. And I really like this script step, saves a lot of headaches. So now when we go home, it shrinks it down to here. If we go to a bigger layout, 
Oh, we didn't set the script trigger yet, so that is going to be a problem. So on layout enter, since we've already created that, every layout moving forward, once you decide your flow is getting this and you can make all the changes you want and it applies to everything. So here it's resizing, but notice it's resizing based on what I set these lines to be at. So if we go into edit layout, whatever I change this to be, if I move this in closer or if we shrink this up to here, now when we go back into that window from our layout, we get resized accordingly. So that is just really cool. You don't have to worry about what size you did make it. That adjust window works for almost every scenario unless you have a list and this list fills this entire screen. And I don't like that. I like my list view to be a little bit different than my form view. That's just my personal preference. I like to see the list instead of shrinking it here where I can only see a couple in the list. I want my list to be a little bit bigger. So I can't do that with that adjust window script. So now we're gonna have to do a different option. And in this particular one, it looks a little bit more complicated, but once you have it, it's set. You can just reuse it over and over and over, and you only have to change a line or two, and everything else fits the way you want. So the first thing to note here is the custom menus or status bars, because these are going to change how everything fits. If we all of a sudden take off the status toolbar, then the window may not look like you wanted it to to begin with. You may have to go back into something and then you come back and now it's now it's where you want it. So you want to determine that prior to having this adjust window resize to fit, which we still were using that and you just got the options here for the formatting bar, the menu bar, toolbars, you can hide, toggle, show. And then we're gonna get into what layout it is. And I even have a parameter set up so that if I want to force it to always follow a list view, no matter what the, what the view is, then I can do that but here it's dynamic. So I'm using this get layout view state, and this is going to give us a number representing the currently active file view. So we have three different views, form list and table view, and it gives us a number, zero, one, or two, and I'm not gonna remember which one those are when I get down here. So I actually set this so that it's giving me a word. If it's zero, it's form, and this is just simply matching this green list here. So now when I go down here to where I'm actually setting the variables here, I can decide anything for list view is gonna go here. Anything for table view here, anything for form view is here, which I just left that alone. So this parameter, if it's empty, or if it doesn't already have one, it's just going to set it to that, and we get out with some error trapping. But now we have this length, list length and use height, and we'll do this one first. There's different heights for your screen and your desktop and your window and your window content height. So if you just type in the word height, just like this, you can see there are four different options. This is for a field, but all these have window. If you just typed in window, you'd have missed this one. So when you type in height, you get all four of those. You can see they have different sizes. And notice that this 555 and 161, this is 106 difference here. So let's cancel that and let's change this size. We're just gonna move this up. And now let's look at this again. These change 668774, but they're still 106 pixels, points difference than the other one. So that is what is accounting here 
for these toolbars that we can allow or disallow up there. So I'm going to use the screen height instead of the desktop height, but you can use any of them that you want. And I leave them in here so that I can change them once and it's already figured in all of the calculations. So it's very dynamic that way. Then we have this list length and this is depending on the size of the list that you want. So if we go into that one that had the list, I like mine to be about two thirds of the screen is what I determined from using this for many years. So I set this to be two thirds. So I'm gonna comment that out and we're gonna use this. And then when we get to this move resize window, it is simply going to take the height that we determined here of screen height, and we're gonna multiply it by this cofactor. Are we gonna be two thirds, maybe you want it to be a half, and that ends up being the height. And you can do the same thing for the width if you want, but really if you're using this adjust window resize to fit, it's going to have the proper width. We're talking about the actual length at this point. So we're going to use this now and save that and let's see what happens when we go into the different layouts that we've used. We go into this one and it formed nicely. If we go back to our list and there it is, it's a third. Now the placement was way up here and maybe we were over here and then we hit the home and it's kind of hanging right here unless we get really big and it's gotta get big and then we go to the list and now it's jumping, it just jumps all over the place. But the size is where we want it to be. So this gives us everything we need to dynamically go in and change it in any solution at any time, make one change and it corrects all of these having to do with sizing. Next, we will have to cover placement, which is on the next video. And that one has a lot of different options, which can actually get kind of confusing when you get to placement because it can be so many variables and we'll show you those options. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned to the next SQL video on placement, or check out the description for other links to videos and Productive Computing University to give you tips and tricks for your FileMaker developing. Thanks for watching.